In the next 30 minutes, I'm going to show you everything I did to start a six-figure box truck business. I'm being dead serious. I'm going to cover the basics, how to set up your business, the permits and licenses required, the tools and equipment you'll need, and finally, how to find high paying loads that your competitors can't get. I'm not joking when I say this, I've seen people charge $4,000 for this training video that I'm about to give away for free. All I ask in return is that you take a second right now and like the video, subscribe to the channel, and just watch the whole video to the end. That's it. Just give me 30 minutes of your time and you will have all the secrets to starting a six figure box truck business. With that being said, if you're ready to start making money, Let's jump right into the training and start off by covering the basics. What is a box truck business and how does it work? Simply put, a box truck business is a business where you get paid to deliver loads. And in most cases, the freight you deliver will fall under the less than truckload or LTL sector. These types of loads can include packages, furniture, uh, bulk food items, and generally just other cargo that needs local delivery. Box trucks are perfect for this type of work because they're designed specifically to navigate urban areas but still have enough cargo space to carry large loads. This is also why you don't see a ton of semi trucks in the middle of Manhattan but you will see a bunch of different box trucks. Speaking of which, there are a lot of different types of box trucks to choose from and if you don't choose the right one, you'll lose a lot of money. Generally speaking, box trucks are usually 10 to 26 feet long and can range from class 3 to class 7. Class 3 being 12,500 pounds in GVWR or gross vehicle weight rating and class 7 being the bigger 33,000 pound trucks. It's really important to know how much your box truck actually weighs because if it's heavier than 26,000 pounds, you will need to get a CDL which is going to cost you thousands of dollars and a few months of your time. If it's less than that, which most box trucks usually are, then all you really need is a normal driver's license. Anyways, as I was saying. There are a lot of different types of box trucks you can choose from, but in my experience, the bigger the box truck, the more money you'll make, obviously because you can carry more stuff. Pro tip, instead of trying to guess what kind of truck your customers want, just ask them before you even start your business. You can pick up the phone right now and call all the local manufacturers and shippers in your area and just ask them what their preferred specifications are for hauling freight. That's exactly what I did and I had two direct shipper contracts before I even bought my first box truck. I'll show you guys how I find high ping loads for box trucks in detail at the end of this video. So just stick with me. All right, so now that you know what a box truck business is and the type of box trucks you can buy, it's time to talk about the fun stuff, money. How much money can you make running a box truck business? So a lot of inexperienced people on YouTube will try to lie and tell you, oh, you can easily make $7,000 per week if you just buy my course. I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but that's just not true. If we look at the data, on the low end, there are box truck owner operators that are struggling to scrape together $24,000 per year. But on the high end, there are some people making $293,000 per year. And if you pay attention and watch this video to the end, you'll have a much higher chance of becoming one of them. Anyways, if we look back at this graph, we can see that these are just the extremes. If we look at the average, the typical box truck business is making around $110,000 per year, which is really good money. So think about that for a second. Even if you're average in this industry, you can make six figures with a box truck business, but obviously how much you make will depend on a lot of factors, including how many loads you deliver, how well you manage your expenses and where you operate. Because if you operate in a big city like Manhattan, you'll make a lot more money than if you're in, say, rural Wisconsin. All right, so clearly you can make really good money off of just one box truck, but how much is it going to cost you to get started? The biggest expense you're probably going to have to deal with off the bat is going to be the cost of your truck. So if you buy a brand new box truck, you should expect to pay somewhere around $25,000 to $45,000 for a class two or a class three truck. But the larger you go, the more you'll need to pay. Here's a little chart that I made so you can see how much new box trucks can run you based on the size. So feel free to pause the video and take a screenshot if you need to. Thankfully though, there are cheaper options. So if you buy used, for example, you can find decent box trucks for a big discount. I saw a few box trucks with around 200,000 miles on them listed for $25,000, which in today's market is pretty good. Also, if you don't want to buy, 
you can always just rent or lease a box truck. I personally wouldn't recommend those options. You know, just, just keep it simple. Find a good deal on a decent box truck, put a small down payment on it, and finance the rest of it. Now, buying a truck is not the only cost of starting your box truck business. You will also need to spend some money on equipment. So like a pallet jack, straps, load bars. Uh, you'll also need to spend some money on licenses, permits, insurance, uh, marketing, load board fees, and a bunch of other stuff like that. Here's another pro tip for you guys watching. Put away 10 to 15% of your monthly revenue to cover any big ticket expenses like repair and maintenance. I say this because I almost lost my entire business because of a transmission failure in one of my box trucks. I didn't have any money put away for this and I had to open up three new credit cards and max them out just to get it repaired. Luckily, it all worked out for me, but the moral of the story is always be prepared for the worst. Okay, so now that we've covered the basics, let's dive into the details on how to actually set up your box truck business. The very first step in establishing your business is selecting a name and logo for your new company. Please, for the love of God, do not use your name as the business name. Trust me, I'm speaking from experience because it's not easy explaining what GIL22 stands for or what it means or how it relates to trucking. And it's even harder to make a logo for that name. Make sure that your business name clearly represents the line of work you're in because it's going to help you get more loads than your competitors. And I'll show you how in the next few minutes. Anyways, if you're having trouble coming up with a business name, that's totally normal. I would recommend using a business name generator like the one that Shopify offers. You can try using different keywords like trucking, transportation, logistics, moving, etc. to help you come up with a name. When you find a business name that you're happy with, the next step is to find a domain name. The domain name is just a name people can type into Google to look for your website. So for example, my trucking company's name is Guild22. And if anyone wants to look us up, they can just type in www.guild22.com and that's the domain name. Pretty straightforward. To buy these domain names, you can just go through GoDaddy or you could honestly even buy a domain name directly through a website builder like Wix or Squarespace. If you go that route, that means you could get a domain name, a hosting service, and a website builder all in one. Also, here's another pro tip. When you find a domain name that's available, let's say, your trucking company's name is Quick Trucking, and you find that quicktrucking.com is available. You'll also want to scoop up similar names to that domain name, such as quick.com, driveforqt.com, and qt.com. That way, if anyone types in the search bar qt.com or driveforqt.com, they'll get sent straight to your website. All right, so when you settled on a business name and you've bought your website domain name, it's time for you to finally get your own logo. For the logo, you can make your own for free on Canva by using one of their templates. It's not gonna look perfect, but it will get the job done. The old logo that we were using for Guild 22 was something that I made myself in Photoshop within one hour. So if I can do it, you can too. If you don't think you're creative enough to make your own logo, you can always just pay someone on Fiverr to do it for you, which is honestly what I would recommend. So if you do end up outsourcing the logo creation to a professional, you should expect to pay somewhere around $50 to $150 for a decent logo. Obviously you can find some people charging $15 for a logo, but you get what you pay for. All right, so now that you have your business name, your website domain name, and your logos, it's time to finally build a website. Please don't skip this step. Your business needs a website. Period. I've seen so many new box truck owner operators make this mistake because they always think that they don't need one since they're just going to work off of load boards, but that's a huge mistake. You're severely limiting the amount of opportunities you can get by refusing to have a simple one page website. That's right. Your website doesn't have to be incredibly fancy or cost you a lot of money. All you need is a simple landing page for your business that describes what you do what you offer, how you're different, and how to get a quote. That's literally it. This is the exact structure that I used to bring in around 25 leads a month from shippers that wanted to work directly with us. Oh, and by the way, if you want me to make a video showing you how I get direct shipper loads, just leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and let me know in the comments below. All right, as I was saying, 
you need to build a one page website and you can do this through website builders like I mentioned before, uh, Squarespace and Wix. In fact, everything you see on our Guild 22 website is something that I built over a weekend through Wix and all I have to pay now is around $30 per month for the website hosting and that's really it. So now that you've got your website, it's time to officially create your business entity. You really need to set up a business entity like an LLC, a corporation or a partnership for your box truck business and the reason you want to do this is because a business entity can help protect some of your personal assets that are held outside of the business entity if there is ever a claim against the business. So basically, if your business gets sued, you won't have to sell your house and car. Before you set up a corporation or a LLC or a partnership, I would highly, highly recommend you hire a lawyer to help you. You know, each business entity has its own advantages, so definitely do some research before you make a decision and decide what's best for you. Here's a nice little graph though that compares a few different types of business entities, but again, in my opinion, an LLC should work just fine for 99% of box truck companies, but I understand this can be a really complicated decision and you don't want to make a mistake here, so it's definitely worth consulting a legal or a financial advisor to help make sure that you understand the implications of setting up a business entity. Anyways, when you've decided on a business entity type, you can use online services like Inkfile to set up your business because they can get you up and running very quickly without having to go through a confusing government website. If you use some of their more expensive packages, they'll even provide you with an EIN number, an operating agreement, a business tax consultant, and much, much more. So it's definitely worth looking into. So the next step after setting up your business entity is creating a business plan. Guys, this can be a game changer for you because a good business plan will essentially serve as a roadmap for your box truck business. It will organize all your thoughts relating to your business into an actionable plan. Some things you might wanna consider adding to your box truck business plan are financing and budgeting, your target market and competition, your marketing strategy, pricing strategy, your operational plans, and even your growth projections. Guys, don't stress yourself out too much about getting your business plan perfect because you can always tweak it later if you need to. But really the big benefit of having a business plan is that it can help you raise money from banks and investors. As we already discussed before, starting a box truck business definitely requires some upfront capital. So if you don't already have that money saved up somewhere, you'll need to raise money through SBA loans, grants, and from other investors. And trust me, they'll want to see a business plan. As you can kind of tell, the success of your box truck business can really rely on your business plan, which is why I've made a free template for you to download and use. If you want to download this free template, just go to www.guild22.com slash templates and just scroll down to download. All right, moving on. The next step is really crucial. And it's something that I see many new box truck entrepreneurs skip, which is setting up a separate business checking account and credit card. You need to open up a dedicated checking account in the name of your box truck business and you need to make sure that you're running all your business revenue and expenses and only your business revenue and expenses through that account. This is really important if you have a formal legal entity like a corporation or LLC because you don't want to mingle your personal assets and expenses with your business assets and expenses. If these two things start to mix, you risk losing the liability protection that an LLC provides because you didn't treat your business like a separate legal entity. Again, talk to your CPA or financial advisor about this stuff. To kind of help you guys get started, here are some of the best business checking accounts, in my opinion, that you can choose from. And they're perfect for new businesses because most of them offer no monthly fees or minimum balances, and they're easily accessible online. As for the business credit cards, you need to have one for your box truck business because again, you need to separate your personal assets from your business assets. Thankfully, business credit cards are a lot easier to qualify for than a line of credit from a bank, especially when you're a brand new business. Even if you don't need to use the credit card right away, it's always nice to have the money available when you desperately need it. It's also a great way to build your business credit rating, which will come in handy if you need to apply for a loan in the future to expand your business. I'll make this very clear again. Just like your business checking account, 
you need to avoid mixing business expenses with personal expenses on your credit card. All right, so the last step in setting up your business is getting funding. And as we talked about already, starting a box truck business can be very expensive, especially if you plan on buying a box truck. Fortunately, there are a lot of financing options available for you to pick from. Just Google box truck financing and you'll see a ton of options pop up. We also talked about how renting and leasing will help keep your initial costs down, but in the long run, it's gonna cost you a lot more money than just buying. That being said, you obviously need some money to get started. And if you're careful about your expenses at the beginning, you can potentially get started for less than $5,000 if you don't buy your truck and for less than $10,000 if you do buy your truck. I've made a list of a few ways that you can get that initial funding. So feel free to pause the video, take a screenshot so you don't have to write all this down. All right, so that wraps up phase two of your box truck business. In phase three, I'll show you all the permits, licenses, and insurance you need for your business. If you don't do this part right, you could go bankrupt and get shut down by the federal government. So don't skip this part of the video because it's very important. As we discussed in phase one, you don't need a CDL if you buy a box truck that's under 26,000 pounds in GVWR, which is a huge advantage to operating a box truck business. Not only does that make your job as an owner operator easier, but it's also much easier to find drivers for hire when you start expanding your business. That being said, you will still need some basic licensing and permits to operate. First and foremost, if your box truck has a gross vehicle weight of more than 10,000 pounds, you'll need your operating authority, which means applying for an MC number and a US DOT number. With these permits, you're basically telling the government that you're a trucking company and that you're allowed to move loads and get paid for it. To apply for an MC and a US DOT number, just go to the FMCSA website and follow the instructions that they provide. You'll have to fill out some paperwork, pay $300 for the application fee, and go through a 21 day vetting process. You'll also need to file for a BOC3 form, which basically appoints a service of process agent in the states that you will operate. Again, you can do all of this online and it's pretty easy to find. You also need a UCR if you're transporting cargo across state lines, so make sure you don't forget that. And even if you don't plan on moving loads outside of your state right now, I would highly, highly recommend getting all the permits that at least give you the freedom to do so. You don't wanna be in a situation where you're being offered a lot of money to deliver a load, but you find out that you can't do it because you don't have all the right permits. Trust me, this happens to a lot of amateur box truck owners. Finally, you also need to get appropriate insurance for your box truck business. And there are a lot of insurance companies that offer the type of insurance that you'll need, like Progressive and Sentry. I would honestly recommend using an insurance aggregator like CoverWallet and they'll actually show you quotes from a bunch of different insurance companies instead of you having to call each of them one by one. If you need help navigating all of this, just go to the FMCSA website first because they lay out all the permits and licenses you'll need. And if you're still confused or you just have some questions, reach out to your local county clerk's office or you can even reach out to a local field office of the FMCSA and they should be able to guide you. I know all this can seem like a lot, but you can always come back and watch the video. So don't stress out too much about all of this or even just this step. And if you guys still have any questions, you can always feel free to reach out to me over Instagram and I'll try my best to answer any of your questions. All right, now that you have all the permits you need for your business, the last step is to put on all your decals and stickers. The FMCSA will provide you with a few stickers like your MC number, which you'll need to display clearly on your truck. But while you're putting up the stickers, just get some stickers of your company logo made and throw those on your truck as well. This just adds that extra level of professionalism and credibility to your business that will set you apart from the other box truck businesses that are only doing the bare minimum to operate. All right. All the hard stuff is done now, guys. Congratulations. You're just one phase away from picking up loads and making money, but before you do that, you need to buy some equipment. I'm not just talking about pallet jacks, load bars, uh, GPSs, and straps. Obviously, some of you guys might need those too, but there are these two very important pieces of equipment that every box truck business needs. What I'm talking about is an ELD, and a fuel card. An ELD stands for an electronic logging device, which is basically a tool that's attached to your truck. 
and it records all of your driving hours. So this is what you're actually required by law to do to track the number of hours you're operating and to make sure you're compliant with the HOS rules. But if you're not familiar with these rules, I'll leave a link to it in the description. It's really important you guys invest in a solid ELD early in your career. And in my opinion, the best ELD you can probably buy right now is from a company called Motive. Their ELDs are really easy to use. They're very affordable and they have some of the best customer support teams. They're actually so good that I ended up throwing all my old ELDs away that we were using and switched our entire fleet to Motive. So trust me, I am speaking from experience. If you want to buy it for the cheapest price, just click on the link in the description. I also mentioned you would need a fuel card. And the reason you'll need that is to minimize one of the biggest expenses of running a box truck company, which is, of course, fuel. The advantage of using a fuel card over just any other normal credit card is that you'll get detailed reporting of your fuel expense. You can set a spend limit if you have drivers that will be using this. And you can also get a few cents off each gallon that you fill up. When picking a fuel card, you'll want to work with a company that has a massive network of fuel stations with the best discounts. And the only company that comes to mind is RTS. Their fuel card is not only accepted almost everywhere, but the discounts that they provide on fuel help save thousands of dollars every year in costs. Again, if you go through my links in the description, you can actually get a special rate on your fuel card and factoring. You're going to end up buying this stuff anyway, so might as well save yourself some money and buy through the links below. All right, we finally made it to the last and most important phase of starting your box truck business. Phase five, which is finding loads. You need to find consistent and profitable loads to run a successful box truck business, but it can be really hard trying to figure out where to find them. Don't worry, because I'm going to show you some of the best ways to find these loads and make money starting off with the most obvious one, which is load boards. These are generally online boards that brokers and shippers can list loads on for delivery that carriers like you can access. Many of these load boards charge a monthly or annual fee, but there are some that are free. The best load boards that I ever used for my box truck company, in my opinion, were DAT, Selectus, and Amazon Relay. You can also contact freight brokers, uh, 3PL companies, and freight forwarders directly to see if they have any box truck loads available for you. Another great way of getting loads is just by hiring a truck dispatcher. They're kind of like freight brokers, but what makes dispatchers different is that they only represent you, the carrier, and not the shipper. That means when they negotiate, it's in their best interest to negotiate the highest rate for you. Dispatchers will usually handle finding all the high paying loads for your business and some of them will even provide back office support for you, like sending out invoices, tracking payments, and renewing any permits. These independent dispatchers usually work on a percentage basis, and the industry average that these dispatchers charge is somewhere around 8 to 12%. You can find dispatchers charging less than that, but I've never met a single good dispatcher that did. Another way to get high paying loads is by providing a B2C or a business to consumer type of service, such as moving furniture. Obviously, if you want to specialize in the moving business, you will need to market your business accordingly. And as we talked about before, you need to get your business online and make your social media presence known within your local market if you want to work directly with customers. You can also get moving jobs by using sites like TaskRabbit, uh, Thumbtack, and Home Advisor Pros. And there are a lot of specialty moving sites that you can also check out, like Dolly, where you can apparently make $40 an hour and you don't have to work too hard to find jobs. Another really unique way of making money that I've never heard anyone talk about is renting out your box truck to people who need it. You can actually rent out your box truck on sites like coop.com and do short term rentals on the days that you're not working. This is actually a really nice way to make some passive income with a box truck, so it's definitely worth considering. Finally, one of the best methods of making money with a box truck is by just buying a FedEx route. You can actually buy a FedEx delivery route that covers a certain territory, which means that you'll make money for each delivery made within that territory. The great part about this method is that you don't have to worry about getting loads for your box trucks. FedEx will handle all of that because 
they will provide you with the packages every single day. And all you have to do is make sure they get delivered on time. According to FedEx themselves, the average revenue for a FedEx route owner is $1.5 million. So you can see how this can be a very profitable business for you. And if you're smart, this whole business can run itself. Once you have a manager and reliable drivers, the day-to-day -day operations of this business can be run without your involvement. The only real downside that I can see to this is that it costs about $100,000 to buy one of these routes and you need to do a lot of market research beforehand to make sure that you're buying into a high volume route. Now, these are just some of the ways that I find loads. If you want a more detailed explanation of how to find loads for box trucks on one of the biggest load boards in the world, make sure you watch this video right here. So yeah, I hope that was useful for you guys. If you enjoyed the video, please take a second out of your day to like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'm always giving out free education to help you grow a business in the trucking industry. So yeah, with that being said, thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.